for the past three days I've taught you about histograms, how to create them, uh, how they're made. And yesterday, during the video notes, phones away real quick because I have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. You really lost your R stamp yesterday, you're gonna go for two, two in a row. Come on now. Um, yesterday, you talk, we talked about histograms that kind of look like this. Okay. They have that shape. Does anybody remember the name of that shape? When the histogram has that kind of shape. What's the name of that? How do we describe the shape of a histogram that looks like that? From yesterday. Anybody remember? Versus a histogram that looks like this. When the data looks like this. Or when the data looks like this. There's three types of names. What was the name for this kind of histogram? Anybody from yesterday? Symmetrical. symmetrical. So symmetrical has the idea that the left and right side are mirror images of each other. So symmetrical, so right now you're not writing anything down yet. Don't write anything down. Just pay attention. Symmetrical histograms are when the bars are the, and the left and right are the, like mirror images of you. You can kind of split it in half and the left and right are the same. Over here, these are called skewed. When most of the data is on the left, we call it skewed right. When most of the data is on the right, we call it skewed left. That was yesterday. Right? Most of you finished the videos and took good notes and did the Jamboard problem very well. Now, focusing on this, this symmetrical histogram, if I were to connect all the tops of the bars with a curve, look at the, look at the, look at the, what, what, what the, the shape it makes. So I'm going to connect all the tops of the bars with a curve. It kind of makes the shape that's on your snow guy, you notice. Okay. In other words, here's a, here's a kicker now. If you're ever studying anything in nature and the data forms a symmetrical histogram, we call that a normal distribution, normal data. The word normal means we kind of come across we, we come across this often in nature when we're studying stuff. Data kind of just behaves this way, in a normal way, where the average, remember the average, the mean? The average is always in the middle, and then you have some stuff above average, The data, some of the data that's above average and some of the data that's below average. But it just so happens in nature, when we're studying nature, just like, let's say, student uh, body weight, um, student heights, male shoe size, uh, anything in nature. You guys like dogs? Uh, uh, how about uh, dog weight? Whatever we study in nature, it somehow, for some freaky reason, it forms what we call a normal distribution of data. When I say distribution, it just means spread. It creates a normal histogram where the average is in the middle, above average is on the right, below average is on the left. So the title of your notes that you have in front of you, okay, the title, you have some space on the upper right here, either side doesn't matter, on the upper right, Go to write normal curves on the upper right. Okay, normal curves. No, 
Now watch this. Look at this first video that I'm going to play together. I told you that in nature, whenever, whenever we study something in nature, it's freak, freakishly, freakishly ends up being a normal curve. It's just something about the way that the, the nature of reality is. Let me show you what I mean. You come up here. These little videos, watch. Look at this one here. It's called a Galton board. Look at just pure chance behavior. Watch what happens. Right, so this uh, is a Galton board uh, because the first person to make one of these and uh, name it after themselves was called uh, Galton. And what you do is you take a ball, you drop it into the top, and it bounces off all these nails before eventually going into one of these categories. Uh, and when the ball hits each nail, in theory, there is a 50-50 chance of it going left or right. And so each path is pretty much unpredictable. If I was to take uh, two balls and put them in, uh, even if I try and put them in exactly the same, they will end up in completely different positions. We cannot accurately predict where any given ball will go. However, we can make a few statements. We can say that a ball uh, is more likely to end. So you can't, when you get a ball, put it in there, it's going to go to this grid. You can't predict where that ball is going to land. But we can predict how most of them will land. Watch. Check this out. End up then in the middle, then the edge. Because the center categories, there are lots of different paths that end up here. There are only a few paths that end up on the edge. The so what we can do is take this piece of scientific equipment, uh, attach it to the top, and start putting these in by the handful. If we put in absolutely loads of these balls, even though each individual one we couldn't accurately predict where it's going to end up, we can accurately predict the overall pattern from lots of them. Right, and that pattern we end up with is called uh, the normal distribution. In fact, we've got a few too many in the middle there. Uh, you, now, a lot of things in nature follow this pattern. Uh, if you measure people's height, they will follow a normal distribution. Shoe sizes, uh, a lot of things in science and uh, engineering and maths match this kind of bell-shaped curve. Uh, in fact, uh, those of you, if you've done A-level maths, you will know that because the ball has choices of going left or right on each one, this is actually a binomial distribution. And if you have lots and lots of balls going down, as you get more and more of them, it gets closer and closer to exactly matching the normal distribution. So, that so that's, that's just something by chance, chance behavior, things we study in nature, freakishly, Frequently and uncannily, it's unbelievable, it, it follows us what we call a normal curve. Okay? That's, that's like the big idea I want you to grasp for today. We're going to slowly move into this. No matter what it is, if it's in nature, it's going to follow this pattern. Let me give you another example. Watch. Check it out. The bell curve, also referred to as normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution, is called that way because this is how data tends to be distributed quote-unquote normally. And, well, the graph used to display this distribution looks like a bell. We come across that in day-to-day -day life a lot. For example, if we take all your local university students and make height measurements, most people will be of average height, meaning that in a graphical representation, most values will be in the middle. Then at the extremes you have, of course, people who are very tall or very short. The same tends to happen when we measure anything from people's shoe size to their IQ. Uh, so anything in nature, all these different things, you start getting a bunch of data, it's going to form that normal curve. An, uh, in other words, a histogram that's symmetric. It's true. It's weird. The statistician will, of course, point out that when data is distributed in this manner, the mean, which is also known as the average, is equal to the median as well as the mode, with the bell curve having exactly one mode. No, FYI, I don't really spend too much time on this, but another freaky thing is that when, when data is symmetrical, the mean and the median and the mode, they're all the same. It just turns out that way. It's kind of strange. We've been dealing with mean, median, and mode about two weeks ago, the first week. They're, they're all the same number when data is this way. Weird. The bell curve is also, as can be noticed, symmetric. If you draw a vertical line at the mean, two mirror image halves result. 
Finally, if you know the mean, you know where the center of the bell curve or the proverbial top of the bell is, and if you know the standard deviation, you know how spread out the bell curve is. The larger the standard deviation is, the more spread out the bell curve will be. Okay, so they mentioned standard deviation, we're gonna get into that. You guys know standard deviation already. That's gonna come into play shortly. All right, so normal curves. In nature, this happens all the time, weird. Reality is strange, and there's mathematical symmetry, there's mathematical harmony in reality. It's almost uncanny, it's almost like as if this is not, all this is not by accident. If all of life and reality were random, we wouldn't see this mathematical elegance and consistency. It's kind of interesting on a philosophical note. But come back over here. Under normal curves, go ahead and write the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Okay? Underneath. The 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And what does that rule say? Well, here's what the rule says. Let me move this. On that normal curve, go ahead and draw a dotted line from the top center down to that center tick mark, like that. Doesn't matter what side you're on. Go ahead and draw a line there. And that's going to be the mean. It's also going to be the median and it's going to be the mode. But for our purposes, this is the mean. And what's that Greek letter now that we're going to use to describe the mean? I mentioned in the warm up. How do you say it in English? Mu. Mu with an M, as in Mary. Mu. It's like a U with a tail on the left. Go ahead and draw that for me. Good job, Gabriel. So you got one standard deviation above, two, and three. Negative one, negative two, negative three. All right. Now, what is this rule I speak of? You wrote down this 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Okay, all we're going to do is define it, and you're going to go off into uh, your ed puzzle. So what does this rule speak of? Check this out. This rule says 68% of the data, 68% of data is between... negative one standard deviation and positive one standard deviation of the data. Put in bullets. There's only three bullets. 68% of the data is between one negative one standard deviation and positive one standard deviation. All the time. Whatever you're studying, if it, if it forms a symmetrical histogram, then you could take it to the bank that 68% of the data is going to be between one and one above and one below standard deviation of the mean. What else? Well, before I go to the second bullet. In other words, let me get a little highlighter. Do the best you can to highlight, but everything I'm highlighting in yellow, look at this curve. All this I'm highlighting in yellow, notice how that's all the data that's in between negative one standard deviation and one standard deviation above. That's all the data in between negative one and positive one. What I'm trying to say is, look, that's 68% of the data. I just highlighted it in yellow. Okay. Now, what's the second rule? So that's the, the 68. That's the 68 part of the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. What about the 95? Well, watch this. 95% of the data is between two standard deviations below 
and two standard deviations above. When I put negative two sigma, that means it's two standard deviations below the mean. Notice. So far, so good. So let me get my marker again. Let me kind of highlight. Look at all the data that's yellow and pink. Look at all the data that's yellow and pink is within two standard deviations below the mean and two standard deviations above the mean. So everything that's yellow and pink is actually 95% of the data. So from here to here. Ninety-five percent of the data. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. If you want, maybe you can put it underneath. That's ninety-five percent of the data. Two above and two below. In other words, everything that's yellow and pink that I just colored is ninety-five percent of the data all the time. It's going to be within two standard deviations above and below. And last but not least. If it's a little bit above your head right now, don't worry. We're gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna dig in and we're gonna practice this. Okay? And I know it's foreign right now. You've never seen this before. This is math three. Don't worry. Last rule. Look at ninety-nine point seven percent of the data is between Three standard deviations below, three sigmas below, that's negative, that's below. Negative three means it's below, the below the mean, and three above. Three sigmas above. It's a rule that's always true. That's why it's called a 68-95-99.7 rule. So let me get my highlighter again. Actually, let me, I know some of you still writing here. Go ahead. So with my marker, my highlighter, look at this little part right here. This little part of the data and this little part of the data. So everything that's blue, pink, or yellow that I colored is actually 99.7% of the data. Data, whatever you're studying, whether it's the weight of turtles, whether it's the height of giraffes, whether it's the eating habits of bears, it's going to form a normal, it's going to form a symmetric histogram, and the data is always going to follow this pattern. 68% of the data is going to be within one standard deviation above and below. 95 will be above below. 99.7 will be above below three. So it's three, two, and one. That's just the way the that's the way nature behaves. It's weird. It's almost mysterious. No matter what you're studying, it follows this rule. All right. So.